Adobe just released its AI video generator. So now you can turn pretty much anything that's text into video. Let's see what this is all about. For those who don't know, I've been a graphic designer for 15 years, worked for companies like Netflix, Puma, YSL, all that good stuff. I'll leave all that stuff down below so you know who I am. But let's talk about image to video and text to video because these have some new elevations to what it was just a few days ago. To use these new features, all you're gonna do is go to firefly.adobe.com and you're gonna be able to generate for free right from there. So you're only gonna get two free generations, which is about 25 credits. And after that, you're gonna have to pay for a plan which starts at $9.99 a month. I went ahead and did that for y'all so that you can see what you can actually get from this new update from Firefly. So for image to video, you're just gonna check this button right here. And this is gonna allow you to upload a picture. But before we jump into the prompt, Let's go over here to the left hand side and I'll talk to you about what's on that side of the screen. So your general settings are gonna give you the option to use either widescreen or portrait mode and your default and only setting is gonna be 24 frames per second, which I think is pretty good. Next up is camera settings and something to note here is when you upload an image that you want to turn into a video, it's not gonna allow you to use the shot size or the camera angle, you're only gonna be able to use the motion settings. So if you wanna use those first two, you're gonna to have to let the whole thing be generated by AI. The good thing is you'll be able to have shot sizes from extreme close-ups to extreme long shots and everything in between. And you can do camera angles from aerial shots all the way down to top-down shots. So it's gonna give you a lot of different options when you're using just the native system. But if you're gonna upload a video, it's just gonna give you a little bit less. But these motion settings are pretty good too. So you got zoom, you got zoom out, move right, left, tilt, all these different things right there as well. So the last setting down here is a seed number. You probably heard about this from like Midjourney or different AI platforms. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow you to actually build off of an image that you already created using the seed number. So it's gonna make things a little more seamless when you're trying to create because you can just take the information from the image you created before. Now that we got that nerdy stuff out of the way, let's actually talk about how I created the different designs that I'm about to show you. So since this is AI, you're gonna to have to know how to prompt when you're using it. But what I noticed is it's a lot better, at least this first version, with taking images that are high quality and turn them into video. But it still struggles with people and different things like that. So you're gonna see a lot of creators make videos on this new Firefly feature. A lot of them are not gonna cover humans because it's still not up to par. But there's a few things that it does do really well and I'm gonna show you those right now. So my first image is some of my art that I do from Print Gems, if you know, you know. And I brought this image in, it's already high res and all that stuff. And I use a simple prompt that was just eyes blinking while the camera moves inward. So I just wanted to see what it would do. And these are the results. And whether you're using widescreen or portrait mode, this is pretty amazing to me because AI is just taking the information it's given and it's turned it into actual animated video. And with these, I didn't even add any camera settings or anything like that. You can pretty much tell the AI in your prompts how you want the camera to pan left to right or different things like that. Or you can use the motion settings and different camera angles on the side. But I found good results with both. Before we move on to more detailed prompts, I want to show you some more use cases for this. So product shots. With a lot of companies, they take high res photography, but not necessarily get into videography when they're doing their ads and stuff like that for Facebook and different things. This is gonna really help because now you can take the photography and tell the camera what to do using AI. So I generated this image of a perfume bottle, then I use this prompt right here to get these results. So one of them is gonna be a little more basic just to add some lighting to the product. But the other one, I wanted to see some splashes and different things like that and see how realistic we can get it. Now it looks pretty good. It warps just a little bit, but I think that this is gonna be something that you could really use, especially with Facebook ads and stuff like that. So from the test, you've seen that it can work really well with high res images, images, especially product shots, but where it's gonna really shine is B-roll and straight up creativity. Let me explain these two using detailed prompts and just ideas that you want for different camera angles and shots that you might need for fillers. Adobe released his own prompt giving you kind of an example of what you should do when you're prompting and how detailed to be. So of course, I just put that one to the test and added it right into Firefly. And I just changed it up a little bit. So instead of a bunny rabbit or whatever it was, I'm using a lion. But I just want to see how detailed it would get and what it'll actually output. So here's the prompt right here that I changed it to, which is very similar to the one that was already there. I'm using static motion. I'm going to keep the shot at eye level and we're going to see what we get. 
and I think it's a pretty good first draft. And as they say on their website, all the features on the left side are going to be the things that help you kind of rebuild the prompt and actually make it a little bit better. And that's why they have the seed number already prompted in there, because it's going to help you when you're trying to rebuild that same image. So I'm going to go ahead and run it again. And this is the second image that I got. So it's pretty similar. You kind of see another line in the background. It looks decently realistic. I think it's a little jittery, but for the most part, it's not too bad. In my experience of using it so far, it's the same with Mid Journey. Sometimes the very detailed prompts are gonna give you really good stuff. Other times you don't need a detailed prompt. You just need the right wording to make sure you're getting the right thing. So for these next ones, I focused less on being super detailed and I wanted to be more just specific on what I wanted. So I again went back and generated my own images just to see the difference. Here are some of the other prompts that I use and here are the results for those. As you see, it's giving pretty good stuff, whether you're being super detailed or not. And as I said earlier, another way this is really gonna be helpful is the B-roll. So here's a few different ones that I did right here. And I didn't even use a crazy prompt, a large ocean with a red boat floating in rough waves cinematic. And it has that seed number at the end of it because that's just what it generates. And this is what we got. We have the rough waves, we have a nice looking ocean, we have a boat in the distance that's red. This is pretty accurate and it's going to be great for those different type of B-rolls that you need. And with this next B-roll, it was just a snowy forest from above as a deer runs across the screen. And it did a good job with the snowy forest from above. But as you see at the end of this video, there's a cartoon deer that runs across the screen. So it took it literally and you kind of got to be a little more specific with the prompts, kind of like what I did with the lion one. Now, I took more of a graphic design approach to this, and I think for videographers and creators or pretty much just anyone creating, it's going to be a great addition to your workflow. And this is just V1. You know, they're going to add more features and make it even better than it is right now. And this is not the only thing to release. They have Translate. They have the Image 3 model, a few different things that are a step above what we've been using already. But I'm curious to know what you think. Are you going to add these things to your workflow and how this is going to help you in your career or just your path as a creator? And I'm not going to leave you empty handed. Here are some of the really dope ones that I created. And I'm going to leave you with those videos and the prompts so you can get an idea of how you can actually create. This is all I got today. More tutorials and different things coming. It's Jay Burke. You already know. Thank <laughs> you.